Hey, what's up guys? Phoebe Snipes here from Team Epiphany, and this is another episode of Halo Reach Epic Forge Tutorials, a show where we show you guys some of the most epic and unique forging tips and tricks. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a door that you can open and close. Uh, now the story behind this is that I received a request for this from a subscriber, and there's obviously the simple way where you can make a door that you can uh, open, or you can make a door that you could close, but I've actually never seen a door that quite works like this, where you have a open button on the outside and a close button on the inside. So I took it upon myself to make this it took about two hours and again like I said I've not seen any other videos of anyone making this so I don't know if it's the first of its kind um, but I will be showing you the basic mechanism on how this works and the thought behind this uh, I'll not be showing you how to fully make it as I did say it took me about two hours to do and most of that came from tweaking uh, the uh, the cannon men which are in there. Uh, so I'm going to actually start this up and show you guys how it works, but I will be showing uh, those of you who don't want to go the full <laughs> the full length to make a door like this, I'll be showing you a much simpler version to make just a door that you could either open uh, or you can make a door that you could either close but not both. But anyway, so I'll show you here. If you're running away from the zombies and you need to get into your safe house, you'll click that button and you will open your door. Now you might want to give it a little bit of a, a smacking so it'll open a little bit better, but once you have it mainly open, you're going to want to run in. And once you're in here, you, you're safe from the zombies, you're going to want to close that door so that they can't get in. And by clicking that button, it'll close the door shut, and now you can defend yourself from the hordes of zombies. Uh, now you can set this so it respawns, you can set it so it doesn't respawn. Uh, the cool thing about this is that by tweaking the uh, cannon man that you used, you can actually make it so that the zombies could eventually break this down. Uh, because it's actually hovering there, uh, you could uh, you could incorporate that into the gameplay, but for now it works uh, pretty well. I I've also used this in one of my maps that is for capture the flag, and it makes for some really cool capture the flag moments because you can actually lock down the flag building. But uh, so I'm going to forge out of here and show you guys the basis behind how this works. Actually, I'm going to start a new round so we can uh, see what it looks like wow. before the round Over. starts. And again, guys, like I said, if you want to make this so that this is something that you can reuse throughout a game, uh, you might want to tweak the respawn settings. But So as you can see here, I'm just going to delete my roof and pull this up. Uh, we have the basis behind how this works. Um, so over here, you have your main door. And uh, the way that the doors work is that you have a trip mine, which you have on this side. And by clicking that button, you are actually going to explode the back part, which is this... Uh, fusion coil right here. Now the fusion coils are set so that they are fixed, which means they're pushing up against this heavy crate. And now the heavy crate is ha is sorry is against a cannon man, which is pushing it this way. Now the basis behind how a regular door works is that you would trip the the trip mine, it would blow up the crates, and then it would allow the cannon man to slide the door across into the open area. Now to make a door like I did, where you have it so that it can slide open and closed, it's a little bit more advanced in the sense that you break the fusion coils up by having one heavy crate in the middle. So now when you open the door, it works the same way as a simple door uh, would when it opens. Uh, I'm trying to explain this as, as simple as I can, guys, but uh, it might get a little confusing, which is why I actually might put the map in the uh, in the description down below. So if you guys want this map, leave a comment, and I'll put it so you guys can kind of tear it apart and really see how it works. But anyway, um, so once that happens, the, the crate actually slides in up against this crate. Now, if you want to send the crates all the way back, you're going to be using the exact same mechanism that pushed this crate into here, except you're going to be using it with this crate. Now, this crate is hooked up to two heavy man cannons. Uh, that means that it's going to be pushing with a lot of force against all three crates, pushing them back against this one. Now, this is where the tricky part comes in. This took me about an hour to actually balance um, the cannon men so that it wasn't uh, there wasn't too much force on any side. If there's too much force on this side, the crate couldn't slide in. If there's too little force on this side, the crate couldn't slide out. Um, so this is where it all comes in. I'm going to recommend, guys, using two heavy cannon men on this side and one on this side. So now what happens is when you click your button, whoops, when you click your button over here, um, it's going to detonate this, which is going to allow this to push up against this crate and then push up against this crate, which would be in here. Uh, so just to show you how it kind of looks, when I go over to the other side and I activate the button switch here and I click the nice red button, uh, as you can see here, without the roof, it's probably not going to slide in the best of its ability. Uh, but you can see how it's making an effort. And it slides in kind of like this. And so once you have it like that, it's just going to slide straight into here. And so once it gets into here, you're going to detonate this button. And by detonating this... Oh, I forgot the thing there. <laughs> that was my bad. But by detonating that button, you're going to release the other fusion coils, which are going to allow the cannon men to push the last heavy crate uh, against the, the first two. 
and because you have the two cannon men on that side, the, the double force will push them all to the other side. As you can see here, uh, all three of them are here. Now before I get on to showing you guys a much simpler version how to make something like this where you just have a door that can open or close, uh, I'm just going to show you guys one really, really key thing that, uh, might, that might mess you up when you're trying to make this. So I'm going to start up a new round here, and that is this. So unfortunately, the thing blew up there, but you're going to want to make sure that you have a fusion coil up against this middle one because if you don't, the forces of this... And the forces of this are going to be pushing this middle one around, and it can actually blow up the trip mine. So just make sure that on both sides, you have a fusion coil on this side, sticking it against here, and a fusion coil on this side. But uh, guys, that's how you make your advanced, <laughs> very advanced, uh, closable and openable door. But now I'm just going to show you a very quick tutorial on how to make a door that you can open, and by doing the reverse steps, you can actually close it. Alright guys, and here is part two of our door tutorial. Uh, so if you don't want to try the advanced door method, you can try this much more easier method. However, it will only allow you to have the door open or close. You can only choose one. Uh, if you want the door to close, it's basically the same thing but in the reverse. So I'm going to be showing you how to make a door open. Uh, so the first thing you're wa going to want to do is create a landmine and uh, just put it on a 90 degree angle. Uh, once you have it there, we're just going to want to make sure that it's fixed. And then we're going to want to take our shield door. Uh, you can use whatever you want. I'd like to use a shield or small just so it's kind of neater. And just push it through just enough so that the red tip is sticking out like that. There you go. And you're just going to want to walk up to it and test it. If it blows up like that, then you have it perfect. Um, once it's done, just go and grab a door. Uh, so this is going to be like your building. So you're going to want to do this before you start building your structure. Uh, but if you already have a pre-made structure, it'll work the same way. Uh, so you're going to want to grab a wall double in this case, and we'll just kind of line it up here. Uh, now you're going to want to wait for the fusion coil to respawn, but I can already know that when you're using walls, you want to push it so that the blue part is in this, but uh, you can't really see it here, and then that way you know that it's actually pretty perfect. Uh, and then you're going to want to grab your other wall, and that's going to be the other side of your building or structure. Now the actual door that you're going to be using is a, uh, is a heavy crate, and so that's under your scenery and you just want to grab that and so once you have that here line it up with your door line it up so that the tip of the crate is actually sticking on the inside that way it doesn't get uh, jammed in the door and it actually has a pretty good guided uh, path and then you just want to move your other wall up to the crate uh, that way um, you can't get in in case the door is actually closed uh, so once you have it pushed up against there we're gonna grab our we're gonna grab another wall and we'll just make the side of the uh, actual door so once we go here to our structure and just grab another wall double we'll push it right up against the crate uh, so that it's just kinda lined up perfectly with it and let's we'll put it down here so it's not sticking out of the side and then once you have that there you're gonna wanna create another wall and this is gonna be the path where the crate goes in um, so now you're gonna wanna line it up with the side of the crate so that it doesn't actually pinch the crate but it'll allow the crate to kind of get guided so it doesn't go all over the place and then that way people can't like run in there and hide if uh, if this is for like an infection map or something uh, so once you have that all set up uh, the next step that you're gonna want to do before you do anything else is just uh, re readjust your heavy crate so that it's perfectly in the middle perfectly centered um, and then once you have that done you're gonna want to go back to your gadgets and use your explosives and your freezing coil and this is actually going to be used to make sure that the crate doesn't move uh, before someone clicks the button. Uh, so to do that, you just set it on fixed, push it up against the crate. There, the crate can't move. Uh, once you have that done, as you can see here on this side, we have the trip mine that's going to blow up. Now, sometimes this doesn't work. I'm going to try it by putting a fusion coil right up against here. You might have to use a secondary landmine on the inside. Um, but again, it, it just depends on how well you stick the, uh, the landmine in there. So once you have that done, you can see that once the... Uh, landmine blows up, it'll actually blow up the fusion coils allowing this to move. Now the actual way that we get this to move is uh, by just using a cannon man. And uh, so once we go in here, we, you can really use whatever you like. I like to use the heavy. Uh, it kind of works a little bit better, but again, you can uh, use whichever one kind of works better for you or works with your map. Uh, so you're going to want to kind of angle it down. If you angle it up, it's going to shoot up to the roof and, again, not really work. Uh, once you ha see it kind of twitching and stuff, you know that you're actually pushing it. Um, so we're just going to turn it so it's going to go straight. And there we go. So now it's not really affecting your players, but it's affecting the actual door. Um, last thing you're going to want to do is throw on a roof, which I have up here, thankfully. 
and if you put it down you can actually start to see your house being made and again if you're trying to make your house look a little bit more aesthetic uh, you don't have to use a whole wall on this side to cover that you can use a box stick it in something uh, but once you have that done if you go here and you click your button hopefully it'll actually blow up the fusion coils and there you go the door moves and you can walk in now the, the good thing about the heavy man cannon is that it won't actually affect your walking in uh, unless you walk into it so other than that it's pretty easy to use so people can walk in and out of the room uh, but that's it guys, that's all I wanted to show you today, hopefully this helped you, if you're more of an advanced forger, I hope the two-way door helped you, it's a really fun thing to make, and it's really rewarding once you get it to work, and if you just want to start out with a nice door, here is an easy way to do it, but of course guys, if this helped you in any way, please like and favorite the video, and of course if you want to see more of these epic tutorials, subscribe, and check out our epic map series where we review some of the most epic maps from the community. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.